A little more discussion here on, on the, the, uh, the, the, the TD lines themselves, and then, then I'll refer to the charts. Because what the charts are going to do, they're going to take the, the lines, they're going to draw the lines for me. And at the same time, they're going to make price projections. And I just don't want to confuse you with lines appearing on the chart without me taking you uh, down that road first so you, so you know what, what I'm trying to accomplish. Now, what I showed you before was a series of lower prices. And I identified TD level one points. Now here is a series of three of them. And assume this is our current day. Now, obviously, I don't consider this one because it's not uh, a part of the most recent two, the most recent two being right here. Now, if I extend this line down into the future, I've drawn a trend line, a TD line. Now, what I observed, this is many, many years ago, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, is that once a trend line had been, or TD line had been properly constructed, once I penetrated that TD line to the upside, prices reflected themselves to the upside. And by reflected, I mean there was symmetry in the market. The movement below the trend line reappeared only a mirror image above the trend line. Now let me explain that to you. Once I constructed the trend line, I observed to see the lowest price movement below that trend line. So it would be from point one, point number one, point number two, level one, extended into the future. I would identify the lowest price point, which in this case is here. And then I would go to the trend line immediate, uh, immediately above it, which is right here. And I would calculate the difference between this value here on the trend line, precisely on the trend line, and that particular low. And what I found or observed in the past is that once this trend line had been penetrated to the upside and had been qualified, not only would prices break to the upside, but they would satisfy a price calculation of a movement which would replicate the movement below the trend line. Now let me explain to you a little further here. Um, say for example, this value, just to simplify things, on that particular trend line were 20. And say the deepest price low here were 14. This is XYZ stock or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of volatility you can see here, but say there was some news and prices got hit pretty badly and it was way overdone, whatever the excuse was. And I'm sure reporters, and you see this every day in the Wall Street Journal, there's always an excuse. I mean, if market sells off because earnings were, were down, and the final, next quarter, say IBM's earnings were down, well, there was, where else could the price go? It had to go down. Well, then the next quarter, the earnings are down as well, and prices go up. Well, they weren't down as much as people expected. I mean, it's, there's always an excuse, and if you want to go to the Wall Street Journal, you can always find an excuse. But if you're a market parasite, if you're a market timer like I am, I don't care. I don't care what the excuse is, as long as I'm making money in the market. Now, if you take a look at the, getting back to this particular trend line, the value here on this particular day is 20. The deepest low is 14. You would subtract 14 from 20, and you get 6. Now, see, at this particular point on the trend line is 19. Precisely on this particular day, where price opened right here, you penetrated the trend line at 19. Now, obviously, there's going to be fractions involved and everything else. And I'll show you how to calculate this. It's very simple math. But once you penetrate at 19, what I found is that the market ultimately will move higher. Doesn't happen in every case, but there's a good, uh, good percentage of them that do satisfy uh, these price projections. But nevertheless, I have a breakout at 19. I would take 19, which is the breakout, and I would add 6 to it and come up with a price objective of 25. So 25 would be my price objective up here. You've taken something as simple as trend lines, something you never probably thought could, could, could mean anything more than just something to, to, to make you, give you self-gratification when you draw, drew it, and taken it and created it into a, an indicator that'll give you price objectives. And I, I found that to be, you know, at first, something that, that, was, that was accidental. But as I saw it and looked at this process more and more, I found that not only did this occur, but a lot of times price gaps. Say, for example, the previous, the day 
prior to this. This, this day did not exist. Prices would gap above the trend line and just go immediately to higher prices. That was, uh, that was something that I thought that, 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 that was unclear to me before. I could never account for, for gaps. And it, it, it took on a, a significance. Now, what you've got here is the approach. You can reverse this. This is called a TD supply line. We could do it in an uptrend and call it TD demand line. But let me just tell you real quickly. Now, say, for example, this price here were 23, you know, 24. Let's make it 24. This price here were 22 on that particular point here and here. Now, as you can see, a period of, uh, let's make this 25, 25 and 22. A period of three days between these two points have uh, transpired. So what I would do mathematically is just take the difference between 25 and a difference between 20, 25 and 22, and I would get 3. Now, 3 days have occurred. So you can calculate yourself the rate of decline. So you've had a period of 3 days. You would divide 3. So what, what, what in effect, what's happening, this trend line is declining at a rate of 1 point per day. As you can see here, uh, this confirms what I, you know, as I used as a, as a price level here. Price 25, the next day it would be at 24 because you're declining at one point per day. 23, 22. That's your set right here, which created the TD supply line. Now, as you decline further, for a period of two days, what we looked at before was the deepest low, which is right here. You go immediately to the trend line above it, straight up. And in this particular case, it's at 20 which confirms this. You're declining at one, one point per day. Now, when you get to this level, we should have made this 18 probably. You have two additional days here. And when you break off to the upside, you take the 20 minus 14, add 6 to it, and this would be 24. But that's basically, that's the approach. It's simple. Uh, I'm open to questions afterwards after we finish this. And uh, um, hopefully you, you've got this uh, in hand now. now